Let's do it. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Elena Sarkisian. I'm the president of the board of Doing Art Together. I'm so happy that you've all joined us this evening. So great to see so many familiar faces we haven't seen in so long. I think we're all missing some human contact. So um, it's wonderful that you've been able to join us. Um, this evening, we have um, created a panel of people to talk about the challenges of art education in our alternative world. So I wanted to just say a few words. Um, first, for those of you who are new to our organization, uh, we are a 501c3 nonprofit visual arts educational organization, which is focused on hands-on process-based curricula to the underserved population, the at-risk populations of the five boroughs of New York. And um, for almost four decades, we have served over 100,000 uh, young people from pre-K through pre-college in all five boroughs. And our meat and potatoes has always been the public school system, uh, but we are certainly heavily involved in alternative educational sites. And um, currently from actually June through the end of August of this year, despite all of the challenges, we have been present and served 18 schools. So that is tremendous. Um, I became involved in doing art together almost 18 years ago when I first moved to New York City. Uh, I wanted to serve the educational needs of at-risk youth in some capacity. So I was looking for an organization that spoke to me. Um, it was important to me that it was visual arts. My mother was an art teacher in elementary school. My family's very art focused. Um, and what really drew me to doing art together was the idea of enlisting the family, whatever the family meant, um, whether it's traditional family or alternative family, um, in engaging these children in learning. And in particular, the life skills that um, come from this type of learning, um, the empowerment, the self-confidence, the self-expression, um, and all of these skills that can change the course of a child's life at any stage and can be carried with them throughout life. And also, as my involvement with doing art together deepened, I became very um, passionate about the older kids and how some of them might not be talented in the traditional sense in academia, but we're talented, especially in the arts. And I really am very passionate about the idea that a dialogue can exist for such children to know that they have a contribution to make and that that contribution and talent could be parlayed into a career. Um, not necessarily just a, you know, in a strict box of you know, painting an artist, and, and which is certainly very valuable. But I mean, there are other areas of the arts that could be um, gainful employment, like textile design or makeup artistry or um, various things that I, I find it an exciting dialogue for a lot of these young people to have that perhaps they might not have within their homes. So with that, um, I would like to introduce our founder and creative director, Electra Friedman, Askitopoulos Friedman, who has really gone above and beyond, particularly in this year. She has um, solidified her legacy. She, her passion for um, the programs, for the children, for the teaching artists is evident every day. And she's really um, helped doing art together continue to stay afloat in every way. So without further ado, Electra, please continue. Thank you, Elena. And I would like to thank all the board members as well as our staff, our very small office staff, uh, Birgit Wolf and Alex Nasse, as well as uh, our extraordinary teaching artists. Without them, we won't be able to be here today. Um, it all, st our struggles and challenges started in March when the schools were shut down 
and uh, we had to remove the program from 31 sites actually. And we start thinking hard, we communicated with principals, classroom teachers. Finally, it was a great challenge, but finally we realized that we need to take the program, students need art, and bring it to their own home. What a great pleasure it was, virtually meeting their parents, grandparents, they all became involved in and hands-on art workshops. We put a smile on children's faces and we gave them hope actually that indeed they can stay home but they can do their art. And it all started with a book doing art together written by Muriel Silverstein Storper, a great educator, an artist, and my, my wonderful friend and mentor from, for all of us. All the philosophy, methodology, um, teaching secrets, you will find it in here. Um, again, um, we look for the future, actually, and we have lots of plans to um, bring the program on weekends remotely, perhaps. Um, we have ideas to do care packages, care art packages, and send them to other schools, or students' home so they can continue. Right now, the students have very limited materials, but yet with limited materials, there are endless possibilities. And you can see that on your screen. Um, I would like to go on and on, but I would like to introduce you to two exceptional teachers, Arturo and Ruth. Perhaps Arturo, you may start first. Yes, Alexa. Good evening, everyone. My name is Arturo Garcia. I'm a professional painter, and I have the privilege to be a teaching artist from doing art together from 13 years. In these 13 years, I have the pleasure and I have made great, great connection with teachers, with parents, with principals, and of course, with students. When I enter my classroom and I see those little faces look at me, wondering what we are going to do today, it's my job and my responsibility to bring them the best materials, pick the best artists, and make them feel the experience of what is doing art together about. So some of students, they never had the opportunity to have an art class. At the end of the class, and see these little faces, you can see how proud they are, how happy they are with the work that they produce in that moment. So as a teacher and as a painter, it's a, it's a great pleasure to see all of this experience. Um, in March, we have to take the decision to quit classes, stop classes. Um, it was a hard decision, but it was a decision that we have to take because you know the conditions. So with Electra's guidance, we were looking the ways that how we can be together, uh, keeping the students engaged. So every artist created a video with paintings, with um, drawing, collage, with different things. So even if we were not there, every kid can have the opportunity to see us replaying this video and replicate the projects. Right now, uh, with the long distance teaching, I have the opportunity to be in each home of each kid 
looking face to face and be sure that they understand. I have the pleasure to see how they participate, who they are waiting for doing that together. So it's a, it's a great pleasure to see all the, the projects or to see all the, how they interact with each other. But not just the students, also the parents and siblings working together. So this is what is doing Art Together about, is enrich homes, working together. I'm gonna tell you just a little story. Uh, this just happened this week. I have this little kid, probably he has maybe eight years, so six, six, seven or eight years, I'm not sure but it's very young. So he said, Mr. G, I don't have uh, paper to work, I don't have materials to work. So I said, well, don't worry. You will, uh, do you have paper? No, I don't have paper. Do you have cardboard? No, I don't have cardboard. So in this specific time, we have to be very flexible to adapt our classes because we don't know what the kids have in home. Sometimes they have supplies, sometimes they don't have. But this kid said, you know, can I work in my tablet? And I was like, yeah, okay, you can work in your tablet. So at the end of the class, when we have to share all the work, this kid just produced this beautiful piece. He painted, he drew, he made a collage, just in his own tablet. So I was so amazed to see that, uh, how this kid solved this problem and how, um, Oh, this is, this is what is doing that together. Start, make the students solve the problems, be creative with any material. Some of the kids, they don't have supplies. They have, sometimes they have just one pencil and with this pencil, we create nine different colors. So I can tell you more stories, but unfortunately we don't have a lot of time. But for, uh, for your attention, thank you very much. Thank you, Arturo. Ruth. Uh, so, yeah, hi, good evening, everybody. Hi, my name is uh, Ruth. I'm a Portuguese multidisciplinary uh, visual artist. I uh, came across doing art together 10 years ago uh, while I was helping a friend uh, in those uh, mentioned uh, parent-child workshops. Uh, and I had the pleasure uh, to, to meet the company and getting, get involved. Uh, where I start working uh, not long after, uh, providing you know art workshops uh, to our underserved crowds in New York City. Uh, so working in all boroughs um, and also alternative sites. So uh, mainly lately, I have been uh, working with uh, with the restart uh, alternative sites, which are uh, re uh, rehabilit uh, rehabilitation centers that um, so, uh, some of them are live in houses, others work in public schools, and they give equivalents to eighth grade. Um, uh, so our workshops, um, we, I've, I believe we combine, and this is my take on it, we combine our own personal expertise um, that also is fueled on the, what we get as a feedback from the children is our rewarding, right? It gives you, gives us the energy to keep on going. Um, with the um, doing our together methodology, uh, which is like, um, we follow a sort of a routine uh, where you come to each workshop and we uh, show artists uh, visual inspiration for the kids to have access to uh, brainstorming ideas based on the artworks. Um, then we, uh, so do we have this brainstorming and then we do a demonstration, a, a step-by-step -step demonstration that allows the, the kids to understand what kind of process and technique we are dealing with. So we provide also a variety of art techniques. It can go from two dimensions to three dimensions. Um, so we do drawing, painting, uh, printing, uh, textile, um, all sorts of sculpture, assemblage. Uh, we also work with STEAM, um, which is a combination of science, technology, math, engineering, and art. Um, 
unfortunately with the with the distance, uh, the steam uh, suffers a little bit more because it's a lot, uh, with the kids now they don't have the materials, but maybe one day and with everybody's help, they can access the supplies that we need for all these very interesting projects. Um, so also part of our um, methodology is to uh, relate what we do with uh, what's being uh, taught in the schools. So we have the pre preliminary meetings with the classroom teachers and we discuss topics that the kids are uh, going to learn. And so we relate the, uh, those topics in our, in our art making. Um, uh, they have the hands-on uh, art projects and then we do a little bit of a, an assessment out, uh, at the end of each project as well. Um, Arturo was mentioning uh, the remote learning ch uh, challenges. Uh, it's been the same for, for me, mainly the, the students in their houses. They don't have uh, many supplies. Um, we as creative people um, always think of solutions. Uh, so uh, with little, we do a lot, <laughs> like Electra was mentioning as well. So you can see at the screen here, we are uh, making paint on that uh, previous slide. There was paint made with uh, uh, flour, water, and coffee grains. Uh, so some of the uh, basics. Uh, uh, food coloring has been a, a blessing because um, we get uh, to mix the, with the primary colors. Um, all a uh, range palette. Uh, we can do collages, um, a, a lot of uh, uh, paper and crayon and artwork with crayons, which which simplifies uh, a lot of the possibilities. Um, but you know, nevertheless, the kids have uh, this em social emotional interaction uh, with one another and, and uh, ourselves exploring their creativity, their imagination. Um, expressing themselves and all of art is therapy uh, and that helps us a lot these days more than ever. So I can pass the mic back to uh, Electra. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Ruth very much. It is my great pleasure now to introduce you to our longtime school partners Mr. Higgins and Dr. De Costa. Dr. De Costa, you are up. So I want to first just say thank you so much um, for this opportunity to share um, this long-standing relationship that I've had with doing art together. Um, I have been principal of Thurgood Marshall for 10 years. And before that, um, I taught art. I was an art teacher for 15 years. Art is my first um, love and um, my first master's degree is in the fine arts. And so I very much value um, the arts. The challenge with moving into a leadership role was that I wasn't able to replace myself as the art teacher of the school. And so I was able to enlist the wonderful partnership of doing art together and started with the glorious Philomona and the most talented and wonderful. And I miss you greatly, Philomona. Oh, I miss you guys too. <laughs> <laughs> so it was wonderful to have the partnership and to have someone that could carry on um, all of the things that we were doing and the things that we valued. And then I met the wonderful Root and she helped us for so many years. I love you too, Root. And now I have the most fabulous Arturo. And so I really appreciate the quality of all of the teaching artists that um, have been working with us and really helping me to keep that part of our mission, that holistic part of our mission alive. I value the arts. Um, people are talking about inquiry-based learning and we invented that. Everything that they want to do in education, we do naturally as artists and always have. 
And so I see the value of the arts. Um, and I want to say that even when I want to give up, Electra will not allow me to. <laughs> and even when it gets so difficult and I say, Electra, I don't know how we can do this. Every single time she finds a way. And this has been going on for 10 years plus. So I want to say thank you all so much for everything you do for our children, for our families. It is just beyond words um, what you bring to our educational environment. Um, and honestly, I don't know what we would do without you. And so I thank you for hanging in, uh, hanging in there with us, even in this remote environment, which can feel like Arturo was saying so distant and that we can still find ways to be emotionally connected and um, express our love and care for each other, even in this environment. So thank you again, and I greatly value, and I echo everything. This is a challenge for students to be in their homes, um, and we don't wanna lose them. We wanna stay connected with them and our families. And so I really appreciate the partnership and the ability to do that. Thank you, thank you. And now, Mr. Higgins. Thank you so much, Electra, for this opportunity to speak um, on behalf of the great work that PS125 is doing with Doing Art Together. Um, like my colleague Dawn, I have been the principal at PS125 for 10 years. And when I think about PS125 and where we are today as a leader in the Harlem community around our progressive education model, I'm always um, minded, I always remember that we didn't start there. And when I took over at PS125, it was a very different school. It was like many historically underserved communities, um, low test scores, low family involvement, low teacher morale, no access to art, music, physical education. And we struggled as a, as a school to really figure out what is our identity? Because the identity that was being told by all of the external um, partners was a school that was failing and a school that needed it to be improved and eventually a school that would have to be closed. And I remember one day sitting in my office and Electra came and she talked about this really incredible program that she had and she could do STEAM with my students and that it could really bring excitement into the classroom. And I didn't realize how in that moment that the trajectory of PS125 would change forever. Because not only did Electra bring in STEAM, but she brought in this idea of what happens when someone believes in you. And when someone believes in you, you begin to own that and you begin to believe in yourself. And a school that was so focused on all the negative um, stories being told really began to think differently about how can we use this creativity and imagination that kids naturally bring and leverage that to help us create a different kind of learning model that would allow them to truly participate as 21st century learners and global citizens. And at that point, we really began to give great thought to let's embrace this passion. Let's embrace creativity. Let's embrace curiosity. Let's embrace that we're whole beings and that we're not just a test score. We're more than that. We're people and we ought to be celebrated for the great things that we do. One of the things that we sometimes forget as educators is that the first writing that we do is art. And how can we use art across every piece of content that we teach in our school? It's critical. But what we know is that unfortunately, every school, every home is not the same. And I think that that's the reality that I find myself still dealing with, that every kid inside of my school community doesn't have the kind of access and support they need. And so when schools don't have partners like doing art together and schools don't have resources, they really do rely on individuals like Electra and teachers like Mr. Arturo that really figure out how can we create art that's accessible for every child? How can we create art where there are kids that probably are home by themselves and they don't have an adult on the other side of the screen that could support them? 
Do you have a teacher that understands how to still connect that experience and still make it meaningful? And I think that that's what I talk about, about having partners that believe in you and believe in the work that you're doing. I know that this is something that will change, you know, my kids' lives forever. And the one thing that they suddenly, they really do feel is this sense of accomplishment. They feel that, look at what I can do, despite all of the hurdles, despite the sickness and the illness that they see in the news and the, the types of loss that they're inundated with. For a moment when Mr. Arturo comes across the screen, he brings something that they haven't had in a long time, and that's joy. And I will always be grateful to Mr. Arturo, to Electra, but most importantly to Doing Art Together, because it all started because someone believed in me and they believed in my kids, and I'm forever grateful for that. So please don't stop believing. There are so many lives that you're changing. Please continue to do that good work. Thank you, Mr. Higgins. Thank you. And now I'd like you to introduce the glorious Philomena. <laughs> Philomena <laughs> Williamson. Um, she's an artist. Her painting is behind her. She's an educator, a good friend, and our first, first teacher teaching artists in doing art together. I think you started with the choir of Harlem and then Thurwood Marshall, PS 125, but you tell us. Well, I, I did start at the uh, Harlem School of the Arts with Muriel. Right. And remember, that was the, that was the first place where, um, where I met you and I implemented a program, the uh, parent-child class at the uh, Harlem School of the Arts. And I really fell in love with doing art together. Um, I've used the philosophy of teaching art, not only to children, but across the board. Uh, now I teach in university and I, it's still, doing art together is still in my head. You know, the humanistic approach that, that doing art together has is really something that does not, it, it's not limited to just children. It's really taking the, the making of art as something that does enrich our lives. I was thinking of, you know, through the years, it's been 30 years, I think, 40 years since I've- 40 I've known. years. Yeah, oh. that's a long time, that's a long time. And I've gone in and out of working with doing art together, but always staying connected, but not, not working consistently uh, for those 40 years with them. But I have, I've come back and forth in programs that were um, interesting to me. I'm a narrative painter and I deal with uh, adolescence, that's my subject matter. And I really wanted to work in some of the institutions that were, uh, where there were adolescents. Uh, one in particular, I remember being the Spofford Center. Do you remember when I, I went there? And it was one of those days when the children because that's what they were. They were children. They were, you know, I think the most, they were 16 years old. Um, there was a lockdown in the, in the center. And the supplies that I had brought, you know, usually we always start out with, um, with collage. And it's very simple materials because the creativity comes from, from within. It's not the supplies so much. But we always bring wonderful uh, construction paper, glue, scissors, and I remember Muriel always had a wonderful um, array of flowers or a sculpture in the center of the of the table to inspire them, to show them, oh, look at this shape. Anyway, so I had taken a bunch of flowers, exotic flowers, uh, big leaves, elephant leaves, and birds of paradise and ginger plants and all that kind of flower to, to Spofford. Unfortunately, they had to be locked down for an hour. So we waited for an hour before I got in with the supplies and they took away my glue. They took away the, the scissors. All I had was the uh, construction paper and the flowers. And I remember walking into the room and just as, as now, you know, we're thinking of like, what do we do? 
how do we make something out of the few little things that we have? You know, Root is wonderful. It's making um, paint out of the coffee grounds, you know, out of turmeric. You know, this, I had supplies, but all of them were, were confiscated. Um, I remember walking into the room with the flowers and, you know, I sort of arranged them around uh, on this big table that the that they had for me to work on. And the students were amazed because I had brought something that was beautiful. And that broke my heart, but it was also, it was really a testament to what the program can do in situations where they, they don't have anything. And they basically, they don't have hope. They don't even see themselves as people worthy of having something beautiful. And this girl, she did say, why did you bring something beautiful here? Why? For us? And I was like, yes, for you. For you, because I think that you're beautiful and I think you deserve it. And, you know, from there we went on, you know, all we had were pieces of construction paper and we could not even glue the construction paper to, the, uh, to each other. We just had to tear out shapes and arrange them. So that whole process of just making these shapes, um, you know, it's not the finished product sometimes, it's, it's the process going through it. It's thinking about, you know what? There are, there are possibilities. There are more possibilities than what I have in front of me. And I really think that that's what doing art together does for, for children, for adults, for everyone who comes, um, in contact with the program. Um, so anyway, that's, it makes a difference. And it really does. You know, we talk about underserved communities and, you know, as um, Mr. Higgins was saying, doing art together actually does go into underserved communities in so many ways and makes a difference. Um, it gives people hope and it gives them, another way of looking at the world and themselves. So that's really what I wanted to, to share with all of you about. Thank you, Philemon. Thank you. No, and thank, now, thank you, Electra. Thank you. Okay. And food and <laughs> we thank everyone. Yes. And, you know, I must say, and I love working with Root and Arturo in the, in the different schools. It really, it, it, it's a collaborative process, you know, yes. I mean, all of us, um, love working with the children and with each other. It really, it feeds us, you know, it really is. Thank so. you all for being a part of our panel this evening. Um, you know, the personal stories of how you've come to doing art together and how your passion for our programs has deepened through the years and the decades in some cases is, is really inspiring. Um, for those of you who've joined us who are friends of Doing Art Together, supporters, hopefully future supporters, um, of course, my job is to inspire you to support us financially. So um, there's a slide that you'll see now about adopting a program. And we are certainly aware that these are challenging financial times. So whatever it is that you can give is always appreciated, but just if you'd like to contextualize um, what certain donations would do for our programs, so you could look at our slide. A $250 donation pays for 20 sketchbooks for a restart program. $350 donation pays for a two hour virtual hands-on art workshop for 20 children and their parents or whomever is serving as a parent. $500 donation pays for two two-hour virtual professional development sessions for our teachers. $600 pays for 15 art care packages for a virtual parent-child hands-on workshop. $1,000 pays for three one-hour virtual STEAM classes um, for 90 students. Uh, $2,500 pays for eight weeks of a one-hour virtual parent-child hands-on art workshop per week. And if you're feeling very generous, a $6,000 donation pays for 10 weeks of virtual program education, including 
three one hour classes per week. So if by chance you're a part of um, a company, a startup, um, a hedge fund, a bank, whatever, um, looking for a nonprofit to sponsor in these challenging times, that could be a great fit that we would certainly appreciate. Um, there are various ways in which you can donate on our website, doingourtogether.org. Um, there's a link. You can donate directly through PayPal. You can call the office, um, at, which will direct you to Electra since you know, certainly we are remote as well. Um, various ways to make a contribution, or certainly you can email us through the website. Uh, we appreciate all of your support. Truly, in these challenging times, your um, contributions are pivotal. Um, you know, you've heard from everyone on our panel how important these uh, types of learning, these art education programs are for these children who feel isolated in many cases and don't have uh, the support that they need. So let's try to keep them engaged and inspired. Um, it's temporary, as I said, in the beginning of, of this hour or this half hour. Um, hopefully we'll all pull together and go into the new year with some renewed hope and energy for the future. So thank you again to Electra, our founder, our board, whose constant support is pivotal, um, our teaching artists and assistant teaching artists who are truly the lifeblood of our organization, our loyal support partners, our partners, our principals. Um, we really appreciate all of you, especially in these times. So thank you again. Thank you. And happy Thanksgiving. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> and thank you all for supporting us, really. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Good to see you all. Good to see you all. Yes. Bye. 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 Good evening, everyone. Bye-bye.